this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you to all the witnesses for being here. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting here. We are three years later, and, and I can remember those early days of the pandemic very clearly when I was running a COVID unit back in northern Nova Scotia, and all of us were wondering if the world was going to end or not. And uh, here we are three years later, and doesn't seem a whole lot has changed, but many things have. Uh, to you, Mr. Tad, I, I, I'll start with you, if I might, sir. Um, I just want to thank you, uh, first of all, for, for being honest and, and uh, wanting to agree to release uh, information to this committee, if I heard you correctly. Uh, and, and certainly, I think the members of this committee want to be very clear in helping you and uh, your colleagues here understand that this information is not for public release. So I'll reiterate that, as the chair said. Um, so uh, part of the question, I have. You, you said you've agreed to release of some information. Does it make any sense? Why would you put intellectual property in an advance purchase agreement contract? Thank you very much for the question. That, uh, If I catch a question correctly, the question is why we have an intellectual property in the contract? Correct. By the way, intellectual correction is a product of many years of investment, but we did not... Um, prohibit in the contract for if the government wants to resell the vaccine and if necessary, they have the licensing uh, rights to use our intellectual property so that the vaccines for the pandemic preparedness can be produced domestically in Canada. Oh, oh, that's interesting, sir. So your company is uh, leaving Canada, I, I think you said on the 2nd of June. Uh, who owns that intellectual property then? Uh, Medicago owns it currently. Okay, very good. And is it true, sir, that there's an advanced purchase agreement with Medicago and the Canadian government uh, for 20 million doses of your vaccine that was never, ever produced? Yeah, because we, although we have actually got an approval from Health Canada in last February uh, last year, and we were preparing for the launch of the product, but we faced unexpected quality problem. And while we are fixing it, the market need for the vaccine evolved to the bivalent vaccines, although our vaccine is monovalent. Therefore, we just, our approved vaccine is irrelevant because of the market involvement. Uh, very good, sir. And through you, Chair, is it also true that uh, the WHO would not accept your product because of the involvement of Philip Morris with your company? Yes, it is not because of the product quality or product itself, but because of the our shareholding structure. Uh, very good, sir. At that time. Right. And uh, through you, Chair, is it also true then, sir, that the government of Canada invested $173 million uh, into Medicago in terms of physical space and uh, buildings and equipment, etc.? The contract we have, I said, was for a development of the COVID-19 vaccine, as well as the building of the uh, bio, uh, biopharmaceutical biotechnology capability in Quebec. Uh, so, sir, through you, Chair, uh, my understanding then, if, if, if even though we don't know for certain, if we're going to talk about $30 a dose, $20 million, do $20 million doses, $173 million that your company, without giving Canada a single dose, has received at least uh, $773 million from the Government of Canada. We use those. First, we appreciate all the support from the uh, federal government of Canada as well as Quebec government. And those uh, funding was intended to finance our COVID-19 vaccine and the building of the manufacturing capacity in Quebec. And those objectives were actually fulfilled. We spent all those monies to fulfill the approval of our COVID-19 COVID vaccines. And we have been uh, proceeding the construction of the local manufacturing capacity until the recent um, decision made by our shareholder. All right, sir. But uh, again, to be clear, $773 million and no doses delivered. Uh, not really. When we were preparing the first launch, we faced a quality problem. We decided not to release out of specification product, uncertainly. Okay, sir. But just to be clear, how many doses were given to the Canadian government to be distributed? Is a contract. How many did you actually physically distribute to the Canadian government? How many doses uh, of no your dose, vaccine? Uh, no dose was distributed from Medicago. Okay, so no doses and $773 million. And Medicago owns the intellectual property and still owns the yep. physical building and manufacturing capability even here in Canada.
Wow, uh, that's great. And um, in the in the contracts that you have signed with the Canadian government, if you could just clarify those things, because I wasn't sure what you were talking about in the very end. That, that it seemed you were talking about some redactation of those documents. Can you clarify that once again for me, please, sir? The part that were redacted uh, in our response to um, access to the information uh, response in the February 2021 was relating to the inform information relating on pricing, uh, quantity, and the facility availability and um, facility locations and availability plans. We thought this is uh, has a direct commercial application. That is the reason why we requested the detection of those documents. About 20 seconds. Sorry, did you say the pricing is redacted in those documents? Is that what you said? Pricing and the facility locations and the quantities are the key information which should not be utilized by our competitors. Okay, thank you, Chair.